Hello, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the image tracing or vectorization tools available in Aspire and VCarve Pro. We've got a project open here that's 12 inches wide, 6 inches high and half inch thick material. I'm going to start by importing a, an image file, so I click on the import bitmap for tracing icon. Here we've got an image file that's been downloaded off the internet, it's a very simple JPEG file. Open the file you'll see that the, the JPEG automatically gets scaled to fit in the center of our 2D view. If we click on the background, so click away from the JPEG with the left mouse button, it deselects the image. If we place the cursor on the image and click left, it selects the image. If we click a second time, you'll see that we get the, the transformation handles in the corner, the little white uh, boxes. This indicates that we can change the size of the, of the image. We can click and drag with the left mouse button. Alternatively, if we hold the shift key down and click and drag, it scales about the center of the selected image. This is the same as if you're using vectors. So shift key, click and drag on a corner, and it will scale about the, the, uh, the center of the selection. We can also use the image sizing or the object sizing option from the menu. So we can set the exact size for the selected object. Here we can say, OK, we want the width of this JPEG to be exactly 9 inches and apply and close the form. If we click twice, if we drag this around in the 2D view, if we inadvertently move it from the center or we move it to a new place, and we wish this to be centered back in the center of our design. We simply use the align objects and say align the selected image or vectors in the center of the material. OK, so we've imported our JPEG file. We can now use the image tracing tool, so fit vectors to bitmap. Here we've got some options to work with color images or black and white images. The, the JPEG that we've just imported is a, a very simple black and white JPEG. If we zoom in, I'm just using the roller mouse button to zoom a little bit closer there on the V. Because it's a JPEG, you'll see that there's um, a number of different colors of gray to white at the boundaries of the image. This is caused by the compression routine for the JPEG file. So we have a slider here to control the level of detail that is displayed for the, the selected JPEG. So if we drag this up to, let's say, about just over 80% or 0.82, we can also control how tight the vectors flow around the selected image or how loose they are. So by selecting the slider here, we can have a very loose fit. Or if we say very tight, then a vector will be fitted exactly to match virtually every pixel in the design. I tend to find that a, a, a tightness of about 80% is normally gives very good results. We can also specify a noise filter. The noise filter <clears throat> is used to, to stop the software from fitting vectors around uh, noise or unwanted pixels in the image. So for example, if this was a, a JPEG that had been scanned, uh, you may end up with lots of little uh, noise or lots of little gray pixels in the image. And we don't really want the software to go off and, and trace those boundaries. So here we've got a slider we can say, OK, anywhere where there's a cluster of four or less pixels, ignore them. We don't want the vectors to be created. If we say fit vectors, you'll see that in the two dimensional view, if we just close the form for a moment, you'll see that we've now got the blue line that represents the vector geometry that's just been fitted around the selected image file. If we open the, the layers menu, so layers, you'll see here that we, the software has automatically created a bitmap layer. If we switch this off, then the, the bitmap or JPEG that we've just imported is switched off temporarily. We're still working on layer one, but we've switched the bitmap off. It's still there. We can switch this on or off at any time, but for the moment we're going to switch that switch that to to make it invisible. Hide the layer manager. If we just zoom out a little bit, you'll see if we press the F key zoom to fit, we've got vectors for the whole design. So around each letter, uh, we've got a, some vector geometry. If we use the node editing tool. So node editing, we can also select this mode by pressing the letter N on the keyboard. So N will toggle between selection mode 
where we show the, the dotted lines, press the N on the keyboard and you'll see that we get go into node editing mode. In node editing mode, we can zoom into an area and we can very quickly and easily just tidy up and fix the design. So if we feel that the, this area here isn't smooth enough, so we've got a little discontinuity here, I can place the cursor over this black node, press the right hand mouse button and I can say smooth this point. Alternatively, I could press the letter S on the keyboard to smooth the points and it smoothed the, the, the vector through that point. I could place the cursor over this point here, right hand mouse button, say delete that point and we can put, push and pull on the handles to smooth out the design. So letter F to zoom to fit. So we've gone through importing a JPEG file. So using the import image file, this gave us the, the original JPEG or bitmap image in the two dimensional view. With that selected, we then use the image tracing tool to fit the vector boundaries. Now that we've got vector boundaries, we can calculate toolpaths. Let's move on and look at another example. So file close. We don't want to save these changes for the moment. Here we've got a, a plaque that we've set up and if we if we toggle from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right, you'll see that here we've got a we've got some toolpaths already created. We've got toolpaths to drill holes in the corners, we've got a toolpath to run a profile around the edge, and we've also got a toolpath for engraving the text here. If we look in the well, if we split the windows so that we look at the view. So we've got the 2D view in the top and the 3D view at the bottom there. Here we can now import a JPEG into this space and calculate an additional toolpath. So I'm going to say import a JPEG file. Here we've got a, a JPEG of an eagle that's been downloaded off the internet. Just going to double click on the, the, the border for the two dimensional view to maximize that view. You'll see that we get the JPEG automatically loaded into the two-dimensional view. Again, clicking on the background deselects, clicking on the JPEG selects it. I can use the arrow keys on the on the keypad to, to nudge the, the JPEG around. Or if I click twice on the JPEG, we get the little handles that mean I can drag this around to any position. Let's just nudge the, the eagle down a little bit. With the JPEG selected, we go to the image tracing or vector vectorization icon. Here we've got the same option to work in black and white, change the threshold. If we zoom in, you'll see that the threshold is controlling the amount of pixels that are being drawn. And let's go for about a level of about 70 or 80, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. We don't want a tight fit, we want a fairly loose fit because we want the vectors to flow around these feathers and we don't want the, the software vectorizing lots of small pixels. So fit vectors and close. We go back to the layer control. You'll see that we've got the bitmap view. We can switch this on or off. So switch the, the bitmap off for a moment. Close the layer manager. F to zoom to fit. You'll see that we've got the, the vector boundaries. We select a vector and say node edit. We've got the, the nodes and the vector boundaries that we've cr just created around the grayscale image. F to zoom to fit. Now if we split the window, so we'll say tile the views horizontally, so we've got the three-dimensional view. I'm also going to toggle from the drawing tab to the toolpath tab. Here we've got the toolpath for text. If we look at this, this is a very simple v-carving toolpath. The text is selected, but I'm also going to select the by holding the shift key down, I'm going to select the vectors that we've just created for the eagle. Recalculate this toolpath. Software is now calculating the, the v-carving or engraving toolpath. Double click on the three-dimensional view to maximize it. So we've got the text. Let's just rename that. So we'll say toolpath manager. Instead of text, we'll call this text plus eagle. And apply so let's change the name for the toolpath that we have calculated and we can preview this toolpath so preview the results this shows the 
the V carving or engraving toolpath strategy, engraving the, the detail around the eagle. When it's finished the eagle, it will then go on and engrave the text in the top of the plaque. You'll see here that the software is picking out lots of very small fine detail. We could have used the threshold tool on the vectorization uh, form to stop this happening. We could have said, okay, clusters of pixels that are smaller than say 10 pixels, ignore those. And we'd have we'd have ended up with less result less detail in the eagle. So the software's finished engraving the eagle and the text. Let's just take a look at the groove that's around the outside that we've calculated. That's just adds a decorative border. And finally, there's some drill holes in each of the corners that we use to mount the plaque um, for our customer. So very quick and easy. Let's just close the preview form, go back to the two-dimensional, sorry, to the drawing tab on the left, open the two-dimensional view, and you'll see that we've calculated vectors around a, an imported JPEG or image file. Thank you for watching the tutorial.